everybody. Welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm going to show you how to make Baby Shark's Big Show Cake featuring Baby Shark himself. To begin my cake now, I'm going to start by making some of the decorations first. I have green gum paste that I rolled up pretty darn thin and I'm cutting long stripes, long rectangles out of it. But as you can see, I'm tapering up at the top to make points and this is going to become my seaweed. And just because I like how it looks, really, no other reason, I'm giving all the little seaweed strands that I'm making a twist or two or three or four just to, you know, make them cuter. I'm making them in different lengths. As you see, these guys are a little bit shorter, some are tall, and that way when I put it together, it'll look really cool. Okay, and now I'm going to make a few of the background rocks that you see in Baby Shark's show. They're purple and kind of striated, so I just kind of marbled my gum paste and called it good. So I am making a flat on the bottom and then just a tall domed top kind of hill, mountain, rock, whatever you want to call it. That's what I'm making. And I'm making these two. I made the one, of course, bigger than the other. And I'm just going to put them to the side and let them dry for a little bit. Now to make some more of the decorations, I'm just using pretty much whatever color gum paste that I happen to have already mixed and sitting there ready to go. I'm gonna make some coral right now, so I'm just making wiggly lines all around, kind of like a tree <laughs> with branches or something. I'm just freehanding it, there's no rhyme or reason. I just made a bunch of these because I thought they were cool looking. And I have made um, ocean cakes or ocean themed cakes before where I'll, I'll use like blue fondant to cover the cake and um, you know, more corals and, and tube worms and that kind of stuff. With this, I look, was looking at the show and just different images. It's a lot more simple and colorful and a lot less blue and more beige and browns, the colors of the sand, because I guess they stay at the bottom of the water more often than not. So you're going to see that the things I'm going to do, they're going to be simpler. Like these little things that I'm making, I'm just making some coral, I'm just making basically a lump and then pressing the lid of my food coloring marker into it because it has kind of a neat print just to make some coral. I made some little sponges there as you can see just little balls that I press the center down that basically make cups. This hot pink that I'm working with right now is going to be some starfish and some more little sponge cups or whatever those things are supposed to be. I've got some blue that I happen to have so I'm making some branched coral again out of it. Just because why not? I'm going to take the leftover blue that I have, make some more little cups out of it. Just the same thing as I did before. I used one to make a piece of coral like a rock. I made some starfish out of it. And even nice starfish are just a nice simple little star shape. There's nothing real fancy going on here. I'm putting a couple little cup corals or whatever you want to call them, sponges, on top of my smaller rock. Just because why not? If you, again, look at the show or look at pictures, you're going to see some of the rocks do have stuff at the top of them. I have some yellow, so I'm making some things out of that. Again, just some more of the branched coral because it's more colorful, which makes it more fun, in my opinion. And whatever you do, just make sure you give yourself plenty of time to dry and keep it colorful. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to make baby shark. I'm going to make baby shark in sections because I just felt like it was easier. Because once again, preschool shows, thanks so much for the giant heads and the tiny bodies. We've got a big head to put on a little body and we need it to set up first. So we're breaking them up down into parts. We're making a cone. Going to start out with a yellow cone and I'm going to run it through on a lollipop stick from the bottom going up. I tried to make it as nice and smooth as possible. And I was, I'm figuring this out as we go along, so I'm not going to leave it the way I put it into my block of styrofoam, but for now we'll just pretend like this is what we're going to do. I'm making his fins right now, so I'm taking yellow as you saw, rolled it out so it's kind of pointy on each end, cut it in half, shape it according to, you know, nice rounded off fin look to it. And then I'm going to trim off the extra, trim off the extra, and I keep going until it matches up the body to a nice size. Still a little bit big, so I'm going to take off a little bit more. Just like I said, I wasn't lying to you. Just going to keep trimming off till you get it to a nice size, nice look. Nice, nice, nice. All right, I'm using pieces of spaghetti to attach the fin. I'm making my little pilot holes because they are wonderful. Sticking it in when I have my pilot holes all set. And la la, there you go. Or I guess it should be to do. There you go. So I'm doing the same thing on the other one. I have a piece of dried spaghetti. Stick it into the fin. 
add a little water to the fin first. If I didn't show that, that's what I did. And then just press it into the pilot hole. It works. Okay, taking some more yellow for the tail fin. And I cut a circle out first. I'm going to start there. And I take a couple nips off the sides, as you see, kind of like a heart-shaped. Now it's more triangular. Speaking of triangles, take a little triangle out of the middle there, and we've got the tail fin going. I'm just taking off the sharp corners now so it'll be nice and uh, easier to round off, now, I'm, which is exactly what I'm doing with my fingers. I'm just smoothing it off, rounding it off to make a proper little baby shark fin. And once I have it all rounded off, I had to figure out how I was going to attach it. So what I did is pretty clever, right? I just took him out, turned him upside down, so now he's sitting on his neck, I guess you'd call it. And the weight of the body is not going to smoosh the body anymore, and the tail can be attached just to the front, as you saw, and attached to the lollipop stick. Now I rolled out some white gum paste really thin, made kind of like a smurf hat shape out of it, and that's going to be his little belly patch, I guess you could call it. So I just have it kind of curved. I held it up, I trimmed it down, I held it up, I trimmed it down. It was boring, so I edited that out, but I just kept doing that until I found a shape and a size and everything that I was happy with. And then stuck it on. Add a little water, stick it on. Make sure your edges are smooth. There you go. All right, there's my little page reference I was looking at. And now I'm going to make his head. His head is enormous, so get yourself a lot of gum paste. You can try hollowing it out if you want. I did not. I didn't think it was going to work, so I just didn't. But I'm making his eye holes first. His eyes are pretty darn center, so find the center of his head. Just go to either side of the center and make really big eyes. Now I'm using my little ball tool thing to make the mouth. I pressed in in the center of each eye, like if you go straight down, that's kind of where the corners of the mouth are. And I'm just pressing in, hollowing it out, making a nice ridge where the edge of the mouth will be. And um, yeah, that's gonna be my, my template basically for my starting point for his mouth and his eyes. Okay, now I'm going to do the white on his face. So I start with basically a mask <laughs> and I lay it over the face and now I'm using my X-Acto knife to kind of trim away all the excess. I want it to go around to the sides of the head and onto the cheeks and it has to kind of go under the eyes and then swoop up in the center where the nose will be. So if you see I kind of have almost like a flying saucer type shape going there. Um, and that's pretty much what you're going to want. So I'm just kind of nipping away at it again. I was trying to make sure that the nose comes up because his nose does come up kind of sharp. It's, it's very almost pug-like how it comes up. And once I'm happy with it, then I'm going to stick it on oh so carefully. Just tuck it in the corners and around the back. And um, make sure you can fold it underneath his head too. You leave enough on the bottom to fold under. I'm now using that same tool as before for his mouth to press in so you can see what I was talking about with like a mask and kind of covering his mouth and face and everything. And it will just sink into his actual mouth too and we'll cover it up so it doesn't even matter. Since the white is out, I took two balls of gum paste filled in his eyes using my big ball and my big ball tool there to smooth and round him out nice and big because he's got, again, big eyes, big head, big everything, except for the body, tiny body. Adding two black balls of gum paste into the center of the eyes for the pupil because he really doesn't have irises that I could discern anyway. Two teeny tiny little pieces of white for the highlights in his eyes. And now I'm using a mix of red and brown gum paste to make kind of like a bean there. And that's going to go into his mouth, and I'm pressing it in, and I'm not filling in his mouth. I'm just lining the back of his mouth, so it's not going to bring it to the surface. It's not, you know, it's not going to bring it flush. I'm not filling it in. I'm just lining it, coloring it. I take a real skinny little bean of red and smooth that out to make his tongue. There you go. Looking good. And now I'm going to do his teeth. He's got basically four sharp, pointy teeth that show on the top of his mouth normally, so I'm going to make sure I get four little half triangles. Well, they're actually proper triangles. Four little triangles and stick them in along the top of the mouth. It, I probably should have made them smaller if looking at this and, and judging myself. So just be careful of the size. Make sure you keep your nice sharp pointiness and make sure there's four of them and you should be fine. I'm taking some brown gum paste, just straight up brown to make his eyebrows. He's got very nice gentle arc ching eyebrows. They're not sharp or pointy or anything. They're very much the same width the whole way through. Just make sure they don't go too high up on his head and they do just follow the curve of his eye very normally and naturally. 
and he'll be fine. Look at that. Isn't that cute? He is cute. It's annoying. Well, I find the song annoying. A bit of an earworm. So, yeah, I, I think he's cute, though. I think he's cute. I'm making his little fin now. So I'm making almost like a pyramid, kind of. So if you look at him from the side, the fin is wide. If you look at him from the front, it's uh, a little more skinny, but it still is tapered. So it's wide at the bottom, goes up toward the top. Once I'm happy with it, a little bit of water, press it into place, and we're almost done. We're almost there. See? Cute, right? Not too bad. Okay, I'm using this very sharp veining tool here to poke a couple little, basically upside down teardrop shapes for his nostrils. I'm poking pretty much through the white gum paste to make these little hollows. And now I'm filling up with little bits, it's hard to see, it's orange gum paste shaped like teardrops, <laughs> upside down teardrops that filled it in nicely. It's just pretty small and hard to say. This was, you know, attempt number 27, I think. I am bad at freehanding stars, but that's what I'm trying to do here. I have a little orange circle of gum paste. I just kept cutting out little pieces and trimming away and trimming away. And if you're clever, you might have noticed that cut there was from a really terrible first attempt to my best last attempt. I just cut out all the ones in between. Anyway, make yourself a little orange star to go on his cheek next to his eye. And make sure you add also a pilot hole to his head with your lollipop stick and then let them dry. Don't attach it yet. They need time to dry or it will not support its weight. Okay, back to our cake now. I have my cake. I made an 8-inch cake. It's about 4 inches tall, I would say. It's all chilled in the fridge. I'm rolling out the fondant. And I mentioned at the beginning of the video I was going to do just kind of like a tan sandy color. That's what I was going for here. So I rolled out my gum paste. Lay it over my cake. I rolled it really thin. That's why the edges are all kind of scraggly. I didn't do a very good job with it on this one. But it happens. What am I going to say? So I rolled it, smoothed it, trim off the extra. Same as always. La la la. Okay. Now I'm going to start adding my decorations. I've given them some time to dry and set. Um, not enough, as you're going to see in a moment. Because I did want to show you that stuff happens. Like even when you think you got it going on. Sometimes it's just not going to work. And then you just work around it. But anyway, I'm just putting pieces that I had made together already into little groups. And then going to place them on the cake. This is going to be another one of those mountain type things that I'm going to make more like an arch. So I made it long and rectangular. I cut a little hole, as you see, your little hollow out of the center there, like a tunnel. And I wanted this to go onto the side of the cake, which is why I didn't make it earlier to let it harden. It has to flex enough to stick to the side. I'm just using some water to attach my gum paste decorations. And as you can see, gum paste holds its shape. As long as you give it enough time to dry. Watch the grass blade on the upper left-hand side. You're going to see it just kind of, kind of, go whoop over in a moment. In the meantime, I'm just taking the different pieces I added or that I made and adding them in groups. Oh, you see it's starting to get a little lower. I'm using the hollow that I cut out from the tunnel piece. Plop. Did you see? There it went. And stuff like that happens. It, it happens. It's no big deal. You replace it. You fix it. I just add a little more water and stuck it back into place. And yeah, you move on. It's okay when these things happen. It's life. <laughs> anyway, I'm holding up my little rocks and mountains there with pieces of dried spaghetti. I've got my other decorations that I'm sticking on here and there. A little bit of water. i got some more grass. I'm just kind of filling it in, trying to make it look busy. And sorry about that angle there. That is because the camera is to my shoulder, right at my shoulder. So sometimes you guys get lovely views of my arm. Anyway, so I'm taking my pieces, putting them together. I'm trying to space out the colors a little bit so that you have um, more of a color variety. I see now looking at it, I went pretty heavy with the orange. So yeah, just again, make it as colorful as you can, but keep it very simple, nice and clean and simple. All right, I got all my little pieces on there, my little starfish and everybody. Here comes that torso, the body that I mentioned before. And stick his head on, and there's Baby Shark. Aww, and I'm like, oh, how cute. So I rearranged a few of the decorations, and I felt like it was still a little boring, so I put a couple of little white pearls here and there on the cake just to kind of color it up, make it a little more bubbly or pearly or fun or pretty. But anyway, put these all together, and you have a very cute, very sweet Baby Shark from Baby Shark's Big Show Cake. So... I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because I find that so helpful. 
I have a ton of other videos out there, so check those out. And as always, thank you very much for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.